Hey everyone, welcome back. As you guys already may know, we already have some videos on the channel for reading and analyzing the wine diagrams. We do have that one for Hyundai and Kia for Ford and for Nissan. But because some of you guys already requested to make a video on Toyota and Lexus wine diagram as well, that's why I am making this video today to have a look at the wine diagram for these cars and we will see how we can read them and any points that you guys need uh, for reading the diagram is going to be covered in this video. But before starting to work on the wine diagrams, many of you already asked about a perfect website or programs for wine diagram. Normally I don't suggest any website on my videos because there are some websites out there offering wine diagrams and the workshop manual and of course you need to pay for those wine diagrams i normally don't suggest the name of those websites because uh, any of those ones they offer a different range of wine diagrams and different range of cars so basically for that car that you are after you need to contact them to make sure if they have exactly what you are after so basically the best way is to search on the google to find out one of them contact them and to see if they are offering uh, exactly what you want. All right, let's start on the diagrams themselves. Basically, for the wine diagrams for Titan Lexus, sometimes you find a diagram for something like this that I'm showing you. It comes in 365 pages, and if you check the other pages, you see you see all sort of information that you need. Uh, they are included here. So it means like the component location here i have the component location it shows you all the component location like the fuse boxes all the connectors and uh, then it reaches to the diagrams just like this you see uh if you keep going you have the diagrams and the connected details everything is included in here so uh, this is actually one way some of them they provide the information exactly like this but in separate pages it means instead of having all the information in one pdf file like this you will have different files different pdf files for uh wine diagrams for the component location even for the connector details it really doesn't matter how they provide the files everything is going to be exactly the same all right for reading the diagrams when you get the diagrams you may have two different type generally one of them is like this one in black and white sometimes they call it overall diagrams you see everything in only one page for example this one is for a starting system and as you see the entire diagram is only in one page but some of them are like this when you have a look you see this is for a starting system exactly same starting system that i showed you in that black and white diagram but this one shows everything in color but it doesn't come in one page it comes in uh, multiple pages and it does have the connected details at the end as well so this is exactly what they call it system wine diagram the previous one was overall wine diagram they are exactly the same there are some slightly different way of reading and finding the information i'm going to explain everything to you today So this diagram that we are looking at right now is for the Hilux, Toyota Hilux. Do you know that the wine diagram for uh, Toyota and Lexus, they are exactly the same. So if you know how to read uh, this one, it's going to be okay for all those vehicles on Lexus. So this is for Toyota Hilux up to 2015. And as you see, of course, it's for starting system. So the first thing that you need to do if you are trying to read a diagram is to find the components. All right, to figure out what components you have in the diagram. Like here, for example, this one is a ignition switch. And then we have park neutral switch or inhibitor switch, just in case if you have automatic transmission. A starter relay is here, and this is the starter assembly. So uh, the, everything else you see in between, they are like the joint connectors or the fuse or the wiring. So we need to figure out what they do. So what I do, I try to read the diagram step by step. And in the meantime, we can find all the information. Okay, so basically when you try to start the car, uh, the first thing that you need to do is to put the key into the ignition 
switch assembly and turn it to start position. Okay, this is the first thing that you would do. So when you do it, you're actually going to connect this wire, this side of the wiring to this side of the wiring. All right. But what do we have before the ignition switch? You see, this wiring comes all the way to this fuse. So this sign is actually for a fuse, which is 30 amp. So this one is a 30 amp fuse, which is connected to the battery. So this 30 amp fuse is going to provide the battery voltage to the ignition switch. And then when ignition switch is connected, it's going to provide the positive to this fuse. And we will actually keep going for the rest of part of the wind diagram. But if you look at here on the ignition switch, the first thing is before the ignition switch on this part, this wire which comes from the high amp fuse, from the 30 amp fuse, uh, we don't see the color right now because this wind diagram is actually black and white, but you, we see the color codes. So WR is actually white, red. But if we keep going, we're going to reach to these two wires. So it means there are two different wires, but actually on your car, that car that you are looking at right now, for a starting system, for example, this Toyota Hilux that we are looking at right now, there are not two wires in here. There is just one. But wind diagram shows you all the possibilities for this car. So it means there could be a car, there could be a Toyota Hilux with red wire in here or some of them with white red wire in here. But which one is exactly your car? You have some references in here. So you see the references with the numbers. So uh, just try to remember, for example, the number 20 and number 19. If I show you this part of the wind diagram, you see some options in here. All right. So these options are actually helping you to understand which part of the wind diagram is helpful for you based on the options and the model gear of your car. So we were looking at number 19 and 20. For example, number 19 is referring to any car before October 2013. After October 2013, we need to uh, look at number 20. So if you look at here, this is number 20, all right? So this is for that model year, and this is for the other model year. So you need to know which one is exactly the one that you are after. So as soon as this wiring reaches to the ignition switch, of course, there should be one connector on the ignition switch, right? So that connector is mentioned here just next to the name there is a code g9 g9 is the code of the connector on this ignition switch some numbers like five and seven they are actually pin numbers so it means if you are looking at this wire if you are trying to find this wire on ignition switch connector you know the color right now you have the pin number which is pin number five and g9 is the connector code i will show you some connectors later on but if you keep going, for example, when you when you are trying to start the car, when you're trying to crank the car, this positive from here is going to travel all the way to the other wire, which is black and white, B for black, W for white. And it reaches to a low amp fuse right here, which is 7.5 amp starter fuse. So this one shows you again some outputs for different options here. All right. So for example, uh, for ECM, if you have automatic transmission, this wire takes the power to ECM. If you have manual transmission, MT for manual transmission, this wire takes the power to ECM. And the other two for uh, two other cases, transmission and combination meter. So you have the colors here as well. L is for the blue and Y for the yellow. But what we are after, for example, in this case for starting system, this power from here is going to travel to this part. It reaches again to this blue yellow wire. And then after passing from this connector, which is CG1, is going to go this way or this way. In this case, you don't need to follow both of them. If your car has AT or automatic transmission, you need to follow this part of the wiring. If your car has manual transmission, you need to follow this part of the wiring, okay? So if we consider the automatic transmission, we go from here, this blue yellow wire from here is gonna reach to the park neutral switch or inhibitor switch, which is actually on automatic transmission. 
and this one enables the driver to crank the engine when transmission is on park or neutral. So of course, you won't be able to start the car when transmission is on drive or reverse. But there are some important points in here. As you see on the park neutral switch, so I have some letters and some numbers in here. We already have the color of this wire. But regarding the connectors, as you see here, we have two references. A C26 is called A and C57 is called B. It means whatever you see as B here is connector C57 and whatever you see as A here is connector C26. So this is actually for making the wind diagram much easier to read instead of having C57 here and C26 here they just refer it as A and B which is going to be much easier uh, and of course the numbers next to them they are pin numbers but uh, which one is actually are connected do we have two connectors on the inhibitor switch no one of them is actually for this car that we are working on you see there are two references here 16 and 17 and if I have a look at the description on this diagram So these are 16 and 17. You see before October 2012 production and after uh, October 2012 production. So this one is referring to that. So you need to know which model year your car is and then go for the proper connector code. So the output from here is car is on park or neutral is going to travel to reach to this joint connector. On the joint connector again, we have A and B, again, like the previous one, A refers to C55 and B refers to G55. So we have the connector code and the color codes just next to them. So this power that has a reach to the joint connector is going to travel from here all the way to the output. It reaches to here from this black yellow wire is going to reach to the starter relay. So this is how we follow the wiring and how we found the information. So on the starter relay, we have all the internal details shown here. So this is the uh, starter relay winding, and this is the switch side of it. So we have the numbers even for the winding side and for the switch side. So as soon as this positive is provided, negative is going to get provided from this part of the diagram, as you see, from this part of the wind diagram. OK. and when your starter relay has the positive and negative on the winding side, it's going to get magnetized. So this positive from here is going to travel all the way through the switch, through this blue wire, L for blue, and it's going to reach to the starter solenoid and, of course, the starter motor wheel crank the engine. So, so far, everything easy, not complicated. So you just need to figure out how to find the information like this. But if you are looking at uh, this kind of wind diagrams with all the information in color, so you see it's going to be the same. So if I go for the first page, again, you have the ignition switch here. And this one, as you see, the colors are shown in here. Power comes from this fuse that I showed you earlier. All right, everything really nice and clear. But the only difference between this one and the overall wine diagram is the overall wine diagram was actually giving you all the details, but all in one page. In this one, diagram has been cut in several pages. So you see, we don't see the rest of the diagram in here. You remember when I was following the diagram, when we reached to these uh, starter fuse, power from here travel to the inhibitor switch, right? So up here, we should have the inhibitor switch, but we don't see anything. So what happens in this diagram, they actually cut the diagram in several pages. It means whatever you see here, like this, uh, like this wiring, you need to follow them up on the page after. For example, if this one is page one, if you look at the page two, you need to find this part of the wiring, all right, and turn into the diagram from the left side, all right? So it means these three wires from here are ended to the top right. If you look at the second page, they should be at the top left, just like this. You see, these are exactly those wires that we had on the first page. And if I scroll down, you see all these wires down here. All right. So 
leaving the diagram on the first page from the bottom right if you look at the second page bottom left you're going to have all the diagram you're going to have the rest of the diagram so it's not really complicated everything is exactly the same as the previous one uh, you can find the uh, wiring uh, in in color is much easier to find it out but uh, there are some confusion like this that you can uh, figure it out for example if you are trying to find some information on inhibitor switch that we discussed earlier all right all the connected details are here as well like c26 if you're after pin number four if you want to make sure when you are cranking the engine power supply it's provided on the inhibitor switch or if the inhibitor switch is actually giving the power out for the starter relay you need to find pin number four and five on uh, these connectors all right based on the model year for example c26 so this is c26 and we have the pin numbers right here uh, we can just figure it out we can find the information and the pin numbers location are here as well so nothing really complicated so far i'm gonna have a look at another diagram to tell you something about this so this is the engine control wind diagram exactly for that hilux as you see this one this one comes in 18 pages because it's for the engine control system and it gives us all the uh, connector details too so again same as the previous one you have this one in uh, overall in overall you see all the details in less number of pages but here they have already cut the wind diagram again just like this so as i said you can find the rest part of this wiring on the next page just like what i showed you here if you go for something more practical if you have a car with a starting problem for example engine cranks but doesn't start of course one uh, one cause could be this injector fuse which is providing the power on all injectors so if this one is broken of course all injectors are not going to work so you will have no starting but sometimes engine cranks engine start but engine is running rough and when you check the car there is a fault code for one injector or there's a misfire if you are going to check an injector circuit for example injector number two that you see here these are all injectors you have the numbers this is injector number two number three number four on each injector we have two wires so pin number one this green wire is connected to the ECM this one is engine control module so of course this is the control line and number two this black red wire this one is bringing the power supply on the injector okay so if you want to check for example the injector power supply on pin number two this is super easy two wires you just need to find this black red wire and check the power supply when ignition switch is on or when engine is running but the difficult part is actually checking this control line on the ECM side because we are trying to use the diagram to get some ideas to find some information helpful for our diagnostic. Finding this end of the diagram on the injector side is not hard out of two pins how hard it could be to find one pin but the other end on the ECM side is going to be difficult. For example if you are thinking that this injector is not working because of having some problem on this wire between the ECM and the injector you need to find the other end of this wiring and uh, check the wire itself but how can you do it so this wire is connected to the injector on pin number one but the other end is connected to the ecm on this connector which is referred as c again like the previous one c is for c131 so we have different connectors on uh, ecm so c129 is a which is just right here so this a is referring to c129 we have b c d and e they are all referring to different connectors so what we need in this case is c which is 131 and this control line for injector number two is seated on this connector p number three all right so p number three connector c131 green wire so how can we find this one in the connector you need to go to the last pages that we have the connectors and here is c131 white connector and this is exactly what we need we wanted we wanted to find pin number three this is pin number three all right so we already found the other end of the injector number two control line on ecm connector so all other connectors are here 
as well. Nothing really uh, complicated. All right, so this is how we find the information on the wind diagram. For example, if you want to go for accelerator pedal position sensor, so again, you have uh, connector G6 on the pedal itself, and all the pin numbers are here, and the other end on ECM side, we have the connector code, which is E in this case is G155, and the pin numbers are just next to each one of them. For example, G6 and G155. So this is G155. This is that connector on the ECM. And uh, we need to find G6. And this is G6. This connector is on the axle pedal position sensor. We have all the pin numbers and the connector is black. Everything is just right here. And we have some pages like this in the wind diagram explaining and showing you the component location. It's actually referring to the connectors, but when you have the connector locations, of course, you have the component locations too. For example, we have all the locations referring to the connector codes. If you look at the second page on this one, you have the connectors which are referring to the components. Engine coolant temperature sensor, C17. Engine oil pressure switch assembly. So we have ignition coil assembly, right? So we have fuel injector number one, number three, number five. So they are all pointed to, to that part and we still have connector details here as well. So connector details are actually shown in different pages. Uh, so you can find them sometimes at the end of each wind diagram. Sometimes you can find them uh, on the components location side. You can even search the uh, connector code. For example, if you're looking for C26, you can search the C26 because C26 in this diagram is unique. If you find a C26, is exactly what you are after. All right, guys, I'm not going to make this video uh, very long. I just wanted to explain how to read the diagram for the Toyota and Lexus because many of you asked me to do so. I hope you enjoyed the video. If And just in case if you guys need any videos, please don't forget to write them in on the comment section. So I'm going to put them on the list to make the video as soon as possible. Thank you very much, guys, for watching.